Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, I'm Zehan Rashid of Happy Strong Family. I'm very happy today to have in our studios our very special guest, uh, Brother Dr. Sabil Ahmed. I thought we'd ask him a few questions. First of all, I want to thank him very much, Dr. Sabil Ahmed, for being here in the studio. Uh, I have a few questions really related to how do people of the Islamic faith and people in faith in general, how do we engage with our neighbors, our co-workers, and people that are our friends, perhaps, but who are our friends uh, of another faith or no faith at all. Uh, what in your ways are some of the common ways in which we can engage uh, our neighbors and co-workers? Alhamdulillah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Jazakallah khair for inviting. And this is a really important topic. How do we engage with our neighbors, our colleagues, our classmates? So first and foremost, to engage with them and to introduce Islam with them. We need to realize it's not an option, it's an obligation. So once we have that in our heart and mind, that's how our time, our effort, our passion, our resources goes into it. So that's important. Second thing would be anything that we do in our life, it has to align with what does the Quran says mm -hmm. and what was the Sunnah of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when we look into how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to engage with the people around him, even before we, before he introduced Islam to them, he was a person of high caliber with a with a credibility in the society. Mm -hmm. So when he went to Mount Safa and he said to his people, when they were all standing there, mm -hmm. "Do you believe if there is? Do you believe in me if I say to you there's an army mm -hmm. behind the mountain?" They said, "Yes, we will believe in you." So we have to have a credibility with our neighbors, our colleagues. So we have to build a rapport. Mm -hmm. You know, just like a good uh, good uh, salesperson, you need to have a good standing with the customers so they will agree with you and they will purchase it, right? Mm. So that's number one. Number two, it's important. Uh, in the Quran, it says, Surah Nahal, Ayah number 125. Yes. Oh, in the Ayah continues, Invite all to the way of Allah with wisdom and good preaching. Mm and converse with them in ways which are best and most gracious. Mm. So we should not shy away from uh, sharing Islam, mm. but we should do it wisely. Yes, That's really important. Yes. Number three would be, when we start to break the ice and engage with them, it's important that we should not overwhelm them with yes. too much information. Yes. Because sometimes if they ask us questions, we get uh, excited that now let me share Islam. Yeah. And we speak for half an hour, right? <laughs> we give them this many books and this many flyers, this many websites, a person will get overwhelmed. Yes. So we need to make them curious so they ask questions. Yes. Number four, lastly, we need to uh, we need to make Islam relevant for them. Yes. That what is uh, there in them for Islam, mm -hmm. how it is going to bring uh, solutions to their problems, yes. how it will make their life better, how it will give guidance and discipline, right? Zakala, that's excellent. Uh, very relevant to what you said when you said role modeling. I remember one of my neighbors, when we had the pandemic of COVID, uh, I remember him saying, um, hand washing was never a thing that I thought much of, mm. but I learned from a Muslim neighbor, in fact, a Muslim co-worker, that you guys wash your hands five times a day. That must be very soothing in this time and day. <laughs> yeah. And I realized, Dr. Sabil, that sometimes simple conveyance of a practice that has become a part of our life is so uh, beneficial for people who may not have seen Islam, as you were quite rightly saying uh, in, in the open house that we had a, a few minutes ago, that relevance of things comes to you when you realize this is actually beneficial to humanity. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so I, I take that point completely. Uh, on that line then... Can uh, I give you two quick... Uh, yes, by all you know, means. That's two the, stories that's comes to my idea. mind. Yes. One thing is that uh, as COVID was starting, yes. and people were conscious about you know hygiene and the distancing and whatnot, yes. we had a big billboard in Chicago. Yes. And the message was, you know, washing of hands, you know, distancing and not going to places and not coming from places. Yes. means, you know, all the guidelines. Mm -hmm. sure. And we mentioned that, you know, these were coming from the 7th century. Yes. So that in itself is going to draw people in. Yeah. You know, we thought the CDC just gave the guidelines that are mm -hmm. coming from 7th century. Yes. So it will make them think, you know, maybe there is something in there. Yes. Second thing, when you mention about, uh, you know, hygiene and washing of hands and your friend was surprised, in the hospital, there was a colleague. Hmm. So 
one muslim as he used to go to the washroom he always used to uh, carry a big bottle hmm. right of water and the colleague became really curious you know <laughs> you're going to the washroom break why do you have this are you going to go and drink up there right right and the colleague the muslim person he mentioned yes it's part of the hygiene that after we are done use the washroom use the washroom we have to wash ourselves yeah why don't you try it next time right <laughs> and he tried he felt so comfortable yes. you know so f uh, fresh Refreshed, yeah so fresh yeah, yeah, yeah. at the end of the day he converted to islam mashallah allah akbar right yeah. simple things like that we should not shy away because anything islam uh, wants us to do yes. there's always a benefit for the society yes so i thought that's you know that's that's yeah, relevant that's very relevant and hmm. on the same lines i remember in the last open house in in one of the local mosques uh, somebody said i've always wondered uh, when muslims do this uh, going from straight standing to all the way down hmm. how that must exercise the body very regularly five times a day and i said it's interesting you should say that but really that's probably the only posture i know that literally moves every joint in your body and there's not going to be very many things that will protect you from arthritis etc anyway i digress so uh, another point uh, another question i have brother dr sabil ahmed is the roadblocks that often are if you like hindering the message of islam to the wider community uh, things like violence for example things such as hijab uh, without engaging you into a huge conversation are there some uh, tricks uh, that we can use or not tricks maybe are there some relevant points in which we can avoid a, a huge conversation but still allow enough information so people can be curious and say well there's more to it than meets the eye sure sure so uh, what are the roadblocks to dawa yes one roadblock is you know people may not know it's an obligation yeah okay yeah. so we need to educate them for sure it's as much an obligation as praying five times a day because if you look into the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam if we can define his mission in one sentence mm -hmm. it is to share islam yeah as simple as not only his life by the way every prophet every messenger yeah. no new prophet is to come you know angels are not going to be sent down to knock at the doors and let the non muslims know this is the truth it is us who are supposed to convey the message yes secondly we need to know the answers to the common questions people may be asking yes because i would not be comfortable sharing islam if i if i know that you know people would be asking me about palestine or hijab or jizya or jihad right as they did today in the open house <laughs> uh, that was exciting i'm glad they did so you know it's like uh, someone going out to perform surgery yes if they have the proper attire and the knowledge and yes. the team and the equipments Yes. they would be comfortable they would be successful yes in the same way we need to make sure that we arm ourselves with knowledge yes not only arm ourselves we need to make sure that we uh, prepare ourselves yes. we need to practice ourselves right yes that's number 3 number 4 would be make them curious by saying a few things yes once they're curious they will ask more questions yes for example for example <clears throat> in chicago we had a open house and the question was jihad yes and there were police officers up there sitting in the front row right <laughs> i mentioned do you guys know to the audience yes that they do the jihad every day yes people were surprised really they do jihad i hope you know <laughs> so that makes people realize it yeah. kind of makes them think you know maybe jihad is something else yeah, yeah. and last but not the least uh, it's important for us to make sure that we have to make islam relevant for the people yes. yes so for that reason it's important for us to make uh, videos and brochures and yeah. contents yeah about how islam can bring relief to the social issues yes gambling the youth problem atheism agnosticism gambling suicide homicide mm. the major problem there should be like brochures and contents and videos yes so all of these combined together is going to empower a muslim to confidently comfortably eloquently inshallah, inshallah. to engage with the people yeah, yeah. No, i i really like that concept where people start to see the relevance of islam in their life uh, you were i i my, i i was making uh, notes of what you were saying about the sanctity of a mother for example i mean in this part of the world uh, i'm sure the us is not much different the family has broken down in a big way there are 50% uh, of people unfortunately do not have 
to parents in the home. Uh, there is also domestic violence. There's the issues of intoxicants, etc. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, like you, I also am very keen on inviting people to say, Islam is not just a method. I was very glad that you clarified the method of worshipping, because I think for a lot of people, worshipping is indeed just those five prayers, or going to the church, or going to the mosque on a Friday. And I think the elaboration of that to say, actually, worship is obeying the laws of God at all times, including, as you said, going to the washroom, mm -hmm. including um, even going to sleep, there are laws and regulations that we follow, and they're so beneficial. Uh, so on that same line, then, uh, since another issue seems to be, at least in my experience, I don't know about the US, but here one of the situations also is that the masajid, the, the mosques, don't seem to have um, a regular, if you like, blueprint of some sort to say, we are going to have these regular events that will encourage our neighbors to come and participate on a regular basis. And today, for example, right now we're in October, uh, Islamic Heritage Month is here. And yet, uh, unfortunately, to my knowledge, very little is being done really to make use of this excellent opportunity to invite non-Muslims to be able to see the rich heritage that Islam has to offer. And this is beyond the worship part. This is now practical knowledge. I mean, one of the uh, gentlemen who was in the mosque earlier on, he said, I had no idea that camera had anything to do with Islam. Cameras. Cameras. Oh, yeah. The, and, yeah. the poster board that yes. you have. Yeah, so we actually brought all yeah, these yeah. Islamic Heritage Month posters. And uh, I just like your views on how have you, in your experience, uh, dealt with this, uh, what I called a self-imposed uh, restriction yeah, on yeah. the mosques becoming the hubs of Dawa activity. For our Muslim and non, well, non Muslims primarily, but also for our Muslim brothers and sisters. Because, again, not to prolong this question too much, but we have serious issues with our youth. We have a huge problem with our youth, are simply, I wouldn't say they are they're giving up Islam, but they're definitely disenchanted and cool about Islam. So I'd like your views on that also. I know I'm pushing youth you and, a lot. Uh, then the non Muslim neighbors. <clears throat> I'd like you to comment on both if you could. Sure, please. sure. You know, there is this Pew research that came out that 78% of the non-Muslims who have a negative view about Islam, yes. they, have never, they have never met a Muslim. Right. right. Their negative view goes down to 28% Indeed. if they met a Muslim. Wow. So it's important that we engage with the non-Muslims, especially as a neighbor, as a colleague, as a classmate. Yeah. For them to also come to the masjid is yes. equally important because they may have fear of the unknown. Yes. What may happen in the masjid? Yeah. You know, even though we don't have time, but quickly, in Chicago, as I was passing, driving by a masjid, there was a big procession, a big protest by non-Muslims with the U.S. flags. Oh. I was thinking, what's going on? So we called the masjid the imam. Yes. And the imam, he mentioned that there is a rumor going on in the, in the neighborhood that uh, masjid has weapons of mass destruction in the basement. Wow. So what I advise to them, okay, why don't you bring some donuts and pizza and invite these people, take yes. them to the basement. Yes. And they did. Yes. And these people, they came with the flags inside the masjid. Yes. You know, people were doing hifs, people were praying and, you know, sessions were going on. Yes. At the end of the day, they became so, um, you know, ashamed that, you know, they were protesting a peaceful masjid that they, that they dropped the flags, they apologized, they hugged, they had a handshake and they okay. left. So it's really important that, you know, we need to make sure that we have masjid open houses. Yes. Secondly, there are so many schools, so many colleges, so many churches. We should send out letters from the masjid mm -hmm. that masjid is open. You can bring the, uh, yeah. Uh, you, yeah, you can bring the classes for the tour. Yes. You know, your humanities class, your world religion class and social study. Bring them to the masjid and the masjid, every masjid should have a good speaker. Yeah. So we need to create the speakers. So we'll have to ask you to come more often. <laughs> <laughs> no, all the youth. Okay, so we can come to the youth too. Yes. So we need to make sure that every masjid should have a speaker who is also qualified or someone is qualified with comparative religion, with atheism mm -hmm. and with the social issue, issues. Because these are the questions. So once people come and see, yes. many a times fear of the unknown goes away. Yes. And now they have a, not a negative, either a neutral or positive feeling. Yes. And then once we introduce Islam to them, they couldn't be more receptive, inshallah. Yes. Yes. Like you know, I just excellent. came from I just came from UK. In the UK, what they do is um, so two weeks ago I was in UK. Hmm. Every year 
the whole UK, all the masajis, they do like one combined masjid open house. Mashallah. They advertise, the media comes and the media shows and that they amplify hmm. many non-Muslims that come. So yes. we need to start something here in Canada too. Yeah. That's excellent. So there are many that. ways. Yeah, yeah alhamdulillah. Excellent. Well, I want to thank you very much for this very valuable conversation and this insight into what is really, I believe, issues that all of us, particularly people here up in Canada, need to address. And uh, I, I, I also wanted to thank you for the excellent presentation that you did earlier on, because I think these events cannot be done frequently enough uh, for us to dispel some of these things that I think have really laid in the, the, the communities that live around these masajid. And there's a huge number. I mean, in the in the Toronto area alone, uh, there are almost 70 to 100 masajid. Yes. So we are not in small numbers. Hmm. So if I could ask you to give one minute message to people that uh, you feel have would benefit from perhaps invita uh, inviting their friends and fellows to Islam, uh, what would that one minute message be if you could give us a one minute message about how people invite others to Islam? Okay. Suppose if your colleague says, you know what, I'm interested in Islam. Tell me what Islam is. I only have a short time. I will say to them, OMG hi. OMG hi. So if you have there, so O stands for the oneness of God. So you introduce who Allah is. Yes. He's not Trinity. He's not idols. He's one God with these beautiful names. Yes. The M stands for the messengers. So he wants to guide humanity. So he did not came down. He appointed messengers and prophets from the humans. Right. Then you give the names of some of them. Yes. And then you mention that every single one of them, they came not with a new faith. They came with one faith, yes. which is Islam submission to the creator. Excellent. OMG. G stands for the guidance from the Quran and the Sunnah. Okay. If a person is African-American, I will tell them about how Islam brings unity, equality of all the races. Yes. So we have to package the message. Yes. The OMGH, H stands for the hereafter. Oh, yeah. Give them analogy. In the schools, you have evaluation. At the job, you have evaluation. There's a grand evaluation of every human on the day of judgment. Yes. If they agree with all of these, if they understand with all of these, then you do the I, O-M-G-H-I. I stands for invitation. Oh, yeah. Even if they don't convert, they will understand Islam. At least they cannot complain mm -hmm. against us on the day of judgment that yes. nobody told them. Yes. So OMG high is a simple technique that I often use Excellent. when people ask me about Islam. All right. I want to thank you so much, Dr. Sabeel Ahmed, for your very valuable time. I, I want to also thank you from the behalf of the Happy Strong family and all of the masjid here for your time and the efforts you're doing. Uh, I can only say that we very much envy your efforts and hope that we can repeat some of the work that you're doing. I want to thank you once again. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And I want to thank all our audience for watching. Inshallah, Jazakallah khair. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum.